wait, so you got hit internally, and then what happened? Um, uh, shock mode, so obviously I didn't feel anything for the first, like, couple also, hours. Also, what do you mean you got hit internally? Did a ghost, like, upper, no, no. <laughs> like uppercut no, you or what something? I meant, what I meant by that was the, um, what do I call it? The outer, or the inner edge of the rib. You know where that U is right here? Yeah. I got hit on the, like, on the side of it rather than in the front of it. By a boulder. While he was saving bear cubs mm -hmm. to return to their mother. Yep. On a cliff. <laughs> Sometimes it do be like that, though. I'm not gonna lie. That's it's crazy, though. It's crazy that I didn't feel anything for, like, a couple hours. And then we had an EMT on site. So that was cool. So Basil was there? Yeah, Basil was there. <laughs> He's um, been on this podcast. You can mention him by name. Yeah. Spice Rack. Spice well, Rack. I wanted someone else to mention the name. Bastille. Anyway, he confirmed. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, you'll be fine. Like, you're chilling. And then he was like, I'm gonna go back in the water. I'm like, all right, cool. He goes back for like five minutes, comes back. He's like, how are you doing? And I was like, I thought you said I was fine. He's like, yeah, I'm just checking on my boy. And I'm like, are you lying to me? Like, <laughs> what is it? This doesn't look right. He's like, no, know? I'm just making sure you're okay. Yeah. And I'm like, why are you here? You're I'm like, like, you're changing back. What? <laughs> you just give up? He's Sorry. like, usually they die around this time. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, all right, I'm going back in. <laughs> Catch you later. It's like, I'm done with your ass. I've helped too many people. Yeah. He's like, you're still alive? <laughs> Comes back the second time. It hurts to laugh. Uh, speaking of, I can't believe they're still alive. Ants <laughs> and other what resilient say about my animals. <laughs> what did you say about my aunt? She's resilient, is what, what I just said. Okay, good. Yeah, but we've had a we have a pretty crazy ant problem in the stew. Just <laughs> we do actually. Just because yeah. it's summertime, that's how it is around here. They just like to come in and say hello. Be terrible. They're super mean. <laughs> they clearly love to swim in poisonous. Yeah, I set up, um, I went to Home Depot, right? And uh, wh what's the company? Maybe we could do a shout out right now. Uh, forget this, it. This too much, too much poison work. company. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> this company that just causes Guys. ant genocide. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> just don't laugh, dude. You guys are making jokes. <laughs> wow. For yeah. anyone that doesn't know, I went surfing. <laughs> I mean, surfing went fine. It was getting out of the water. I got rammed by a wave, and it that's it. I couldn't do anything, and I just had to cross my fingers and hope to God nothing was in the way. But I hit a rock. Too bad a fucking on boulder my, was in the on, way. On my ribs. It wasn't a boulder, G. Where were you? What it, beach were you at? Um, San Onofre. San Onofre? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. San it's San Onofre. Open down to San Onofre. <laughs> it's a nice beach, man. It's a really nice beach. Sano? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty secluded. Yeah, fuck surfing, though. Anyway. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, resilience. <laughs> resilience. <laughs> Unlike <speaking> me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the funny that both having these ants in the stew mm -hmm. in conjunction with your bruised rib was the inspiration for this episode? <laughs> because we've tried so much shit to kill these ants. Yeah. Like, you know, the ant genocide company that we yeah. were just talking about. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, nothing works. poison, uh, ant pest control company. Nothing, That's the... Nothing works. Anyways, you know, they got these really cool uh, wall-mounted ant traps, right? Mm -hmm. So normally you just peel the tab off, put it on the floor, and that's it. But some people, they got ants in high places, like we do. <laughs> this one, for example, up in the corner, they yeah. were crawling out from the... I don't even know if the viewers can see this, but we have what's called a base trap up in the corner back there. And it's basically just a foam wedge that goes into the wall or the corners of the walls. It helps, you know, capture low end frequencies, other stuff. Nerdy, uh, nerdy audio engineering things. <laughs> yes. But I came in here one day and there was like a furry black line coming out of the base trap and it was moving. And I'm like, oh, no, that's are they back? <laughs> Not again. <laughs> they back. So I went to Home Depot. I got um, a four pack of those hanging traps or whatever mm -hmm. then i got the 12 pack or no sorry it's a six pack of the floor ones uh open the six pack three of them were already leaking and open <laughs> so that was great um but i put one down on the ground i put one of the other hanging traps closer to the ground because all the ants were crawling out from the base trap down to this hole over here mm -hmm. uh they stopped going down there so kind of mission accomplished the problem is 
Everywhere else they've been crawling, they're now just in larger numbers. <laughs> well, hence the name. They the are like clusters, right? Yeah. yeah. They are a resilient animal. But There's a reason here, why they've been around for so long. Here's the beautiful thing. They took, I don't even know what approach you would call this, but they essentially just threw ant life at the poison capsules because they're filled nearly to the brim with ants now. What? And so now there's more <laughs> ants crawling out. Yeah, Zayd and I were watching them crawl in and out of the poison container. Yeah, they're like, yeah. This <laughs> like, you can see them go down and then come out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is simp shit right here. <laughs> Easy. I didn't know it was an in and out. God damn. And it's annoying because we keep this place pretty clean. Yeah. So the fact that we have yeah, ants and we haven't heard any of the other tenants complaining about it, it's just a pain in the ass. Mm. But yeah. The but are they the kind of tenants to complain? Yes. Things to think about. Yes. They well, I mean, they wouldn't can I mean they are complaining about it, but they're just like, hey, are you having this problem? You know? Mm. Like mm. But anyways, the inspiration behind this episode is I don't know. I just decided to pick a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Listen, I love animals. Yeah, you love, animals. I love nature. You love animals, man. It's great. I think there's a lot to learn from nature, so mm -hmm. let's just like fuck it. Let's uh let's compile a list of the top ten most resilient animals and and learn something new mm -hmm. because there's actually a lot of crazy stuff you can learn. Ants compared to humans. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we both have a head. Just go down. <laughs> That's true. You're not wrong. <laughs> so there's a lot of information on ants here. Yes. So it basically, like, what do you guys want to choose here? Because I want. Well, you're the ant expert. Apparently. I'm not an ant expert no. by any means. But I want to go straight into religion. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. I mean, I, well, well, there's a couple things that, like, I know about ants just yeah. from, like, watching nature documentaries mm -hmm. and shit. Ant life. Like, <laughs> hashtag ant life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things about ants is um, that there's a certain type of ant. I forget which one it is. It might be fire ants. I, I don't remember exactly. But mm -hmm. in the presence of water, they'll start to bunch up. And since they are so light, you know, they'll connect onto each other and form a raft that just floats <laughs> down the river. Like, it's a perfect, like, it looks like a, I don't even know what you'd call it, like an oil stain almost on top of the water that's just constantly moving with the current. Wow. Like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. They're they're all about, like, teamwork and community. It's crazy. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I think they're by far the most impressive in just yeah. in terms of communication and community. Then, yeah, then let's dig into communication. How, like, how do they communicate? Is it relatable to us in any sort of way? Well, based off of the research, um, they actually communicate with each other using pheromones, sounds, and touch. Mm. Uh, since Indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> Indubitably. Yeah. Since most ants live on the ground, they use the soil surface to leave pheromone trails that may be followed by other ants. You don't say. Yeah. Uh, in species that forage in groups, a forager that finds food marks a trail on the way back to the colony. The trail is followed by other ants. These ants then reinforce the trail when they head back with food to the colony. Mm. So essentially, they are they're trying to hack their way around like what is the most efficient route for us to get food and find other resources for the colony by uh -huh. using pheromones. Hmm. Hmm. And what are their... Their senses, they sense with their eyes or they sense with their, they have um, little tentacles. Before. <laughs> and, tentacles. Antennas? Yeah, antennas. They're really yeah, they got um, antennas, I'm pretty sure. Couldn't think of the word for some and reason. And they do have eyes as and, well. Yeah, and forgive me, I'm on pain meds. So. <clears throat> <laughs> Not very resilient of yeah. you, yeah. It's the, no. It's the ant tentacles. Uh, <laughs> might be the vaccine, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows, but yeah. I do know this as well because you're talking about communication and pheromones. Um, when ants die, they let out a specific pheromone, and that signals all of the other ants. I wish I could remember the name of it, but mm -hmm. it's uh, complicated and not my area of study. Yeah. You know, long names, big science names. But when they die, they release this pheromone. It lets other ants know that they're dead. And what they do is they'll take that dead ant, if they're close enough to the colony, even sometimes if they're out and about and they're on a, you know, they have a path that's pretty solid and well-defined. They'll pick up the dead ants, bring them to the colony, and then they have like a burial chamber where yeah. they'll leave hmm. all the dead ants. So an interesting experiment I watched on YouTube, this guy had a little ant farm and he's like, I have, I purchased some of the pheromone that ants secrete when they die. I'm going to put it on a live ant and see what happens. You can purchase that stuff? Yeah. Huh. Okay. You can purchase anything with Bitcoin <laughs> and the dark web. With that crypto. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So, 
some ASMR for you. Yeah, I love it. I love. Oh yeah. It. Wait. Wait. Are you ready for it? Be quiet. Nice. <laughs> good stuff so yeah this guy he put a um he put some of that pheromone mm -hmm. on a live ant and then placed it in the colony and ants started to tug at it you know to take it to the dead spot and then it just walked its way over to the dead area and just lied down in there you're shitting me yeah wow that's incredible so you can manipulate ants um if you introduce their pheromones to them mm -hmm. externally like without them producing it Wow. Hmm. So I guess that's how strong hmm. pheromones play a factor. And so we can ants. Like, lab, dude, dude, lab keep this in mind. So we spoke about pheromones. They don't only use pheromones to make trails. In this example, a crushed ant uh, emits an alarm pheromone that sends nearby ants into an attack frenzy and attracts more ants from farther away. Um, and they essentially call them propaganda pheromones to con confuse enemy ants, which is just insanity. Yeah. Because... I mean, wait, so you're talking about ant warfare, essentially? Ant warfare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. There's secret wars that happen every day that you never hear about. <laughs> <laughs> the ant war. But they've been around for millions of years, so mm -hmm. they've, they've evolved to, to do yeah. these kinds of things. And there's millions of them. Yeah. I think there's like 22,000 <laughs> 22, different ant species. Really? Something like that. Well, why are you, are you laughing? laughing at? <laughs> what? What? Yeah, I spelled defense. Oh my god, bro. I was in a rush, bro. Yeah. It's defense. Yeah, bro. You act like you were typing this while climbing defense, fool. Like, what is this? Bro, I was in a hurry. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's actually like, Zayn spelled. And I'm a writer. Zayn spelled defense. Spelled funny. defense. D e f e n c. <laughs> yeah. Defense. I'll take the L on that. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. <laughs> Where do you want to Good meet up stuff. after this pod's over? Defense. <laughs> By defense. <laughs> oh, oh, man. So tell us about the ant's defense. I, I did not know that ants bite besides the fire ants, actually. Dude, listen to this. So I'm listening. <laughs> ants attack and defend themselves by biting and in many species by stinging, often injecting or spraying chemicals such as formic acid in the case of formicine ants. Hmm. Alkaloids and piperidines in fire ants and a variety of protein, protein components in others. Hmm. So they're busting out all the stops. Like they have Vietnam era stuff. They have. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? What are you saying? Wait, wait, hold what on. Are you it's chemical about? warfare, bro. <laughs> That's World War One. It's like dude. Agent Orange shit. I don't know. <laughs> I, what? What? Are you, I'm so lost. What did you say? Okay. Is it an ant warfare? It said ants are busting out Vietnam era <laughs> weapons. Oh. oh. I'm done, dude. I'm so what done. are you talking about? I'm so done. Okay. No, no. I got I got what he's saying now. You start reading now. No, I get. Do you, do you just right. want me to read this word for word? Or? No, no. Just pick what you right. find most or interesting. Trap jaw ants of the genius. Oh, my God. That's fucking... Oh. I still can't get I over told you guys. I can't this. laugh too much. Okay? Let's stop. <laughs> this, this is, is gonna turn into a meme episode i'm telling you okay how did you not well there are different types of ants we know that when you were talking about defense how did you not mention the bullet ant well there's a lot to read read here so i know the bullet ant has one of the most painful stings or bite of mm. any insect i think it's regarded the as the most painful the most okay. yeah it's the most painful that won't necessarily kill you mm. so i think it's the most painful non-venomous I know they use them for like um, initiation rituals in certain tribes. Yeah, there is a tribe, and I wish I could remember the name of them. I can Google them right now if you'd like. But is it one called of... Quest? I'm just kidding. Regardless of the name, it's, it's a great song. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. I really know how. I like how he said, "Um, oh, like he's gonna continue," be. and it goes on to sing. It just keeps going. <laughs> This is how you know. I'm stressed out by trying. Logan's over the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm very over today. It's been a long one. I still got a lot Listen. to do after this as well. Hey, I, hey, this is the most I've laughed in like a couple days, so thank you. This, <laughs> I, I'm getting out probably like two to three weeks worth of laughing right now. So oh my God. Fair enough. That, that it feels that's, good. Okay, that, it does feel good. Anyway. But yeah, there's a tribe. Yes. A quest. <laughs> uh, and they have a, a, a ritual ceremony. 
for a, a boy to transition into manhood. And one of the things they have to do is they have these specially made um, like hand covers mm -hmm. that they weave together with some kind of grass and they create all of these little perforations. Think of like an oven mitt. Yeah, it's like an oven mitt with a whole bunch of like tiny holes in it. So like kind of like imagine a tw like a like a tweed or a weave oven mitt, if that makes any sense. Okay. And yeah. then they take these ants one by one and they put them in like each of the little holes mm -hmm. and they're all bullet ants. And then I think you have to leave on the gloves for how long is it? It's like a ridiculous, it's a ridiculous length of I time. I just know it's one of the most like painful days, experiences. A couple of I think hours. it's like, I think it's either a couple hours or a day. Wow. So like yeah. leaning on 24 hours, something like that. Yeah. yeah was, that's just a hellish, hellish experience because from what I've heard, it's like people describe it as the most intense pain they have ever felt. A well, ant. I mean, they call it a bullet ant for a reason. Wait, and here's the thing I've always wondered about ants, right? So ever since the early days, you get taught that ants are strong and they can carry things like chairs. <laughs> so I was wondering, why haven't they ever picked up a human? Well, of course, that's an exaggeration. Yeah. But they, I don't know. Like, I don't know how strong they are. Like how much force they can actually carry on their back. By the way, for anybody, for anybody who was curious, it's the uh, Mawe. I'm going to guess that's how it's pronounced. Uh, the Mawe people. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, There's a video. Nat Geo actually did a video on it. And this looks terrifying. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it's not fun. It looks horrific. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Good Lord. We'll put a picture on the screen right here. Yes. Have fun editing that but, side. But I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. yep, in relation you. to their body weight and size, um, they are one of the strongest insects. I don't know if they're one of the strongest animals out there, insects, but they can carry a lot of things like 100% up to their body weight. No, That's ants insane. have... Um, no, it's, I think ants can lift 20 times their own body weight and they have the greatest ability to carry something solely based on their weight mm. um, than any other animal or species yeah. whatever on the planet yeah based off of their weight yeah like if, for example if a human could lift as much as an ant could it would be roughly four thousand pounds mm. like is what a human could lift that's insane that's insane that's pretty crazy what about power lifters <laughs> what po power lifting ants no well i mean like just for example like there's power lifters who have probably deadlifted what like 13 1500 pounds sure Right? Yeah. Anyway. That could be, I don't know, three Yeah, times multiply that 15 by 20. <clears throat> 1,500. I am not going to right now. <laughs> Jesus. I, I really hope my math is correct. 1,500 pounds multiplied by 20. <laughs> 30,000 pounds. Yeah. Well, that's the equivalency. Yeah, because they're assuming that the average person can only lift 200 pounds, which I think is actually a fair estimate. For most people. Yeah, but in terms of powerlifting, people that like, you know, like to carry trucks on their back and stuff. Dudes who literally carry, they pull 747s yeah, like, like with a on. rope. I don't think that's normal. You know? <laughs> of course that's not normal. Yeah. Those it's are the, the warrior extremes. ants. Yeah. They always have beards. Um, cool. Go down a little bit, please. They're usually Icelandic. Yes. Let's see, what else can we, uh, can we talk about here? Huh. So, <clears throat> quick fact. Many animals can actually learn behaviors by imitation. <laughs> that was Saeed's quick fact. <laughs> Thanks for chiming in, Saeed. It's insane. Um, but in, in regards to ants, learning. So many ants, um, they're the only group apart from mammals where interactive teaching has been observed. Mm. So a knowledgeable forager, for example, I'm not going to even try to pronounce this species of ant, can lead a naive nestmate to newly discovered food <laughs> by the process bad. of tandem running. Dude, it's, they get yeah. you in the second half with that name. Because yeah. you can say the first one, uh, temnothora <laughs> Temnothorax. Temnothorax, temnothorax albipenis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Albipenis. I just noticed that. I don't know, I don't know if it's pronounced albipenis, though. It's definitely not. <laughs> Wait, it might be. Alb Look I'll, it up. Look it up, please. I'll, I'll be... Bro, it's I'll fine. Be it's fine. I'll be okay. nice. <laughs> but... I'll be, I'll be, be Okay. Okay, I got you. <laughs> the <laughs> penis ant species, they... They, the they have something called tandem running. Yeah. And what that is, is essentially they have an older ant, a mature ant, mm -hmm. that teaches a younger one how to forage for food. Mm -hmm. 
How is that not a Disney opening sketch? Or like, a, you know, those uh, Pixar animated shorts before the movie? Yeah, where it's like, like the perspective of the ant. Or it's like they had like Bao or they had the um, the island one, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Have you seen a Disney movie in the past like 20 yeah. years? <laughs> yeah, I have. 20, 20 But what years. is Bao and what is the other one? What are you Bao, saying? well, they have the island one. I forget exactly. I think it's called Islands if I remember correctly. But Is it a Pixar short? Yeah, it's the animated shorts before the movie. Oh, the only ones I remember at the moment are like the one with the mochi dessert thingy with the chubby kid. And then... I think that's one. Bao. Is that Bao? Oh, then yeah. That's yeah, I think, I'm pretty Bao. sure that's Bao. Okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> then no, I but I mean, it. like, how is there not one of those Pixar yeah. animated shorts of, like, the older ant teaching the younger ant the ropes, and then they go out on a trip or a journey or something like I'm that? I'm sure they listen, have listen, some I'm going to edit this part like out so that Pixar doesn't pick this up. We're going to talk to them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we need to copyright this We're idea. We're going to talk to them. <laughs> They're going to take it. <laughs> what did I'm you surprised copyright? they have it. That son of a... Pixar. 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 What? All I'm saying is yeah. if Pixar makes an animated short about that mm -hmm. and it doesn't come out for the next six months after this episode airs. We better be tagged there. We 100% came up yeah, with that. I'm going to sue them. On, yeah. <laughs> we 100 did. 100 did. 100%. 100 did. 100 did. We 100 did. did. Now, nest yeah. construction is actually very interesting for ants as well because mm. depending on the species, um, some species are nomadic in mm -hmm. nature, so they like to travel around and build like makeshift nests, while others like to stay in one specific place just because maybe the climate is up, up to their standards, maybe they have a lot of food around there. Um, so different ant, ant species mm -hmm. move throughout the world differently. Who would have guessed that ants can also be sovereign citizens? <laughs> no. Well, actually, if you pay attention to um, ants come in I'll, <laughs> in many different sizes as well. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen fire ants like throughout the world. Some of them you, are huge. You don't want to mess with the ones in Egypt. That's for sure. Those things are like as big as my fingernails, dude. Have you ever been to Lake Tahoe? No. I don't know why, but they're ants like legit. Yeah, they're like they're the like, size of your nail. It's crazy. They're huge. They're yeah. And it, it'll just be like a normal ant. You know, the same one in Cali posted up. This but is, bigger. But bigger. Just on yeah. the bulk. Sorry, completely different, <laughs> mm -hmm. completely different insect, but flies also come in like yeah. a huge. You're right. That's you're true. right. A huge sample size. Like it's it. very true. It's not too off topic. Still now. No, but I mean, like, we got the, you know, we had, like, the baby fruit flies here the other day. And yeah. And if you drive over to a stable, you have, like, horse flies, which are the size <laughs> yeah. of, like, a, normal a grandpa flyer. pill. You yeah. know, they're huge. Oh, my God. Fruit flies. And, and, dude, it's also fascinating how they maintain, um, like, the temperature within the actual nest area. Mm -hmm. They use all sorts of, they understand which materials um, produce heat, uh, give, or prevent heat from being trapped within. They control ventilation and mm -hmm. they do all sorts of stuff to make sure that their living area is situated. So as mm -hmm. dumb as they are, they are very knowledgeable in certain areas. Well, are, are they dumb then is the question. From a human perspective, they're dumb. They're but dumb, yeah. Well, they're very intelligent. In comparison to a human being, obviously. They're yeah. intelligent in numbers. That's their strength is just massive amounts of numbers. Hmm. Mm -hmm. One of their strengths, other than their ability and to live. You like have your little raft room. thingy and... So in between rocks, do they Simmons. do they have colonies? They do. Yeah. And yeah, ants are colonizers. Do they have kings and queens, like bees do? They have. Or, sorry, be, uh, queens. They do have they? queens, I believe. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Subterra. All ants are queens. Go down yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if she breathes. Wait, I want to double check if ants have queens really quick. Do ants have queens? <laughs> I feel like they do. A queen ant is responsible for laying the eggs. Yes, they do. Oh, okay. nice. Interesting. So that could just be a wife. Unless. The queen ant is way bigger than the rest of the ants. Everyone's doing the queen, then. The queen ant looks like it's. Damn, she's huge. Like three to six times larger Whoa. Yeah. than the other, the normal ants. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I killed a queen before then. <laughs> I think we've all killed a yeah. queen. Yeah. But yes, moving on to my favorite. We know you, it's your favorite. Camels. Because you're a man of the sand. Yes, sir. Wow. He's a man. I'm the man of the God sand. Damn. I am a man of the sand. Take it with he joy and pride. I don't care. I'm a man. 
<laughs> Go down, please. Why do you keep going up? <laughs> I don't know. He's... This guy's fried today. Okay. Well, if you guys didn't know, camels are actually built for survival. <laughs> so Hence, I fucking hate this guy, dude. <laughs> their little bump. That little bump there oh, carries a me. one extra life. Bro, what are you talking about? I'm kidding. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's scrolling down. <laughs> let me let me read this for you. I want to read the, the script. The is plus 20 XP. <laughs> so, wow. if you think the ability of human beings to fast is impressive, yeah, camels are able to live for six months without a meal, mm -hmm. and they're able to live for multiple months without water. Because as you mentioned, they have a hump on the... Mm -hmm. Or on their back, or I don't know what specific area you want to call that. It's but probably the back, yeah. Um, one of the things is that one of their adaptations is that they're able to rehydrate faster than any other mammal out there. Mm. So they can drink 30 gallons, 113 liters of water in Whoa. only 13 minutes. Wow. Holy cow. So if, they really fill up like a car, basically. Basic, yeah. If any other animal drank that water um, that quickly, they would dilute their blood and kill themselves. Yeah. So these are these are adaptations that stem from millions of years of evolving mm -hmm. in the Saharan desert. Oh. So I'm reading a very fascinating fact from earthsky.org, yeah. and they say that camels can go up to seven months in the desert without drinking water. During that time, they may lose nearly half of their body weight. Yeah. So I'm curious, what do you think about... So camels, obviously, they were probably worse than this back in the day until they, you know, they evolved over years and years and years. What do you think shapes their structure today? What do you mean? Like the, the anatomy of, of them or like their kind of like their ability, their resilience level is well, so high now. Well, this is something that they've just always had just because they've evolved within the, yeah. the desert environment. So, so the environment in the desert is really what shapes kind yeah. of... It, that's what shaped Your the camel, and, definitely. I mean, it's such a harsh environment. Yeah. There may be times where you can't get water for four to six months, mm -hmm. you know, or sometimes you can't eat for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that's why they evolved to, you know, be able to last in conditions like that. Because that's impressive for a mammal to be able to go yeah, that long without food or water. I'm thinking of it in like in terms of science, like, science. you know, camels are built a certain way. They're they're built, and, they're, and then it, suddenly th something internally had to change whether it was you know genetics or cells you well, it's know, not like it's kind of to build this super camel that we have today <laughs> dude it's it's not like this happens over the course of a week where you go I from know, a basic I, yeah, yeah. ass camel Obviously. to a super camel <laughs> yeah <laughs> just a, a 2020 wrapped it's a camel, camel on, it's a camel on sarms it's a, it's a <laughs> slow it's a slow iterative process that happens over the course of millions of yeah. years so no i get you evolution yes yeah and uh i would actually i would actually well, like we'll leave that unanswered but <laughs> i'd like to have logan read the mating section sure <laughs> I would be glad to read the mating section. I'm sure you would, Sailor. Mm. Nice. Is that dromedary? <laughs> Just yeah. read it, bro. Dromedary or dromedary? Dr dromedary. The male dromedary camel has an organ called the doula in its throat. <laughs> a large inflatable sac. He extrudes from his mouth. I'm going to stop doing that. Yeah. Uh, when in rut. What does that even mean? To assert dominance. When horny. Got you. To, I like how they call it a rut. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like highlighted because it has other definition. To, anyway. Sorry, when when in rut to assert dominance and attract females, it resembles a long, swollen pink tongue hanging out of the side of its mouth. Mm. That is the doula, a large inflatable sack. Camels mate by having both male and female sitting on the ground, with the male mounting from behind. The Big male, shocker. the male usually. Do you know how to say that word? Ejaculates <laughs> mm -hmm. three or four times within a single mating session. Camelids are what? Camelids are the only undulates to mate in a sitting position. Oh shit! Is that what they call um male camels? Camelids? I don't know. I'm wondering. Is that a the typo? only undulates to mate in a? Unless they call the unless they call multiple camels camelids. 
I think it's I think it's multiple. It's like octopus, or, octopi, or like a cu- octopi, or like a couple. No, octopi is a word because you don't say octopuses. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what well, I don't know. It's very interesting though. Hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what camelids are. Well, there's the camelid family, but there's a lot of oh, they're camels with hats. That's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Please go down. Why did you make For the read- love of God, go down. <laughs> Why did you make me read that out? <laughs> because I wanted to laugh at you. Stupid. Yeah, come on, man. Can't just laugh at us. Uh. <laughs> Equal okay, share, so- baby. Equal share. So going back to your, yeah. you know, the biological reason why they're able to survive in these environments. Mm-hmm. Um, the red blood cells of camels are oval rather than circular in shape, which you'll find in most oh, other oh. mammals. So they'll travel faster is what you're saying. This facilitates the flow of red blood cells during dehydration and makes them better at withstanding high osmotic variation without rupturing when drinking large, large amounts of water. So mm-hmm. it, it goes down to the shape of their red blood cells. Holy mm-hmm. hell. A 1,300-pound camel can chug 53 gallons of water in three minutes. <laughs> Man's hydrated. Dude, what is that flow rate? <laughs> what is that flow it's rate? Insanity. 53 divided by three. That is 17, roughly 17 and a half gallons per minute. Wow. Jesus. Thanks to their sacks. Good (laughs) Lord. I'm telling you, Zade, Zade, could you imagine, just for reference, this is a gallon, right? Half a gallon. Yeah. Half a gallon or more? No, I think it's a gallon. No, I think this is a gallon. 64 fluid ounces? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. A a camel chugs... (laughs) 50, what was it? 53 of these <laughs> in three minutes. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're crazy. Good Lord. That's insane, dude. God damn it, why'd you give me this? Here, I'll take it back. I'm good. No, give it to me. I got it. Give it to me now. Give it to uh, me. Oh. All right, never mind. That is disrespectful. But speaking of uh, religion. Let the man do Yeah, it. so why does, how does camels play into religion? So religiously, they're mentioned. What do you know about them religiously without the context of this? Without the context? Yeah. They're a companion. They're, there's a reason why, um, well, obviously, like in the desert days, there were certain wars where they were pure desert. There were certain wars between like tribes and things like that, of course, that were more like city, right? So any other time they would have horses or they would take the horses and travel alongside camels. That's what I would know. Mm-hmm. Um, religiously speaking, I mean, they're just recognized, you know, as being um, like a, it's like we look at it as celebratory meat, I guess. Um, oh, so you eat camels too? I don't eat camels, but. I've never seen. Camel, it's not, you don't run across it very often, especially here, obviously. But if you look for it, or if you just have the thought of it, it's available everywhere. Like, I've never seen my Major family. countries, like Saudi Arabia, um, usually the desert countries. Yeah. You know? So think of Iraq. Think of everything else. Because I've never seen my family back at home, like, eat camel. I've never had that experience. Yeah. I know there's, I know at Whole Foods, I you, think they have camel milk. Yeah. You can find camel here, <laughs> or like, too. No, no, not Whole Foods. Probably some, like, Erewhon. Yeah. Or one of those other places. Camel milk near me. But, uh... <laughs> I don't know. It's just they're very, they're loyal. <laughs> Zane, you like this? You could buy raw camel milk on Amazon for two hundred and fourteen dollars. Uh, that's for a twelve pack. No, I'll stick to my goat milk. Thank that's you. That's a twelve pack, man. Come on. No, screw that. Come on, it's a good uh, deal. No, it's not. <laughs> You've been to Costco, okay? Okay, so so this is this is interesting. It says yeah. Um. At some Islamic schools of thought, mm-hmm. uh, they consider it haram to, which means forbidden in Arabic, for a Muslim to perform salat, which is prayer, in places where camels lie, it's said to be a dwelling, dwelling place for mm-hmm. the shaitan, which is also known as a devil. Yeah. So, I mean, like anywhere else in the world, there's always going to be scholars that speak against it. Yeah. And some that speak like, you know, it's, it's totally fine as long as you do these things or whatever. Yeah. So, I don't know if you know, but um, a lot of people these days believe that if you eat, like, 
camel and you're allowed to eat it, um, your wudu or what is it called? It's like your preparation. Your, yeah, to, your preparation to yeah. pray. Mm -hmm. It's to ablution. Uh, what is it called? You know what it's called? Damn, I like. I don't. I think it's ablution. I just, just yeah, call it whatever. preparation for a prayer. Preparation for Did prayer. You call it ablution. Yeah. Is that how it's? I think so. I don't know. I'm gonna Google that. See if that's a word. Yeah. Look it up, please. But um, what was I? Where was I going with this? Completely forgot. Um, ablution. ablution. Oh yeah, preparation. Uh, for ablution prayer. is the act of washing oneself, often used for humor, humorously formal effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you were right. So it's a formal thing. It's a. It's it's another form of practice, I guess. But oh. it, it you it, it's a self cleansing thing that you do. Yeah. It's yeah. a ritual. The it's other ritual. definition is a ceremonial act of washing parts of the body or sacred containers. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So normally we wash our mouth, nose, face, hair, so we can get some of the roots and stuff, ears, and uh, feet. Well, yeah, feet, arms, all the way to the elbow. And but not past. feet to the ankle. You can go past, but like it's just there's like, a, like a minimum a requirement. Practice. I guess. Yeah. But yeah, it is, ensures cleanliness and it's kind of like the respect of going into prayer. So, mm. like, for example, I listened to like WAP today. I'm going to go clear my ears and do the whole ritual before I can pray. You know what I mean? Mm. It's kind of like submit, like intending physically to go pray. Yeah. Let's think of it that way. I saw a video a long time ago of a mosque that actually had specific washing stations mm -hmm. inside of them mm -hmm. that were like built to make it easier to wash your feet and like mm -hmm. easier to just wash mm -hmm. yourself. Like essentially it was like um, they had a seat yeah. that you could go to, right? So after you were done washing everything else, you'd go sit down on the seat. They had like this faucet yeah. or whatever that hung above where your knees would be. And then they just showered your legs. Yeah. And that was it. I'm like, yeah. that. Ain't a bad idea. Yeah, like, like we we've yeah. had that forever. Um, so yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's a seat essentially, and there's like all kinds of faucets. Sometimes there's wells. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, if it gets too packed, we still have sinks. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, Good essentially, place. a lot of scholars argue these days that you know eating camel meat just kind of dirties you up a little bit, or it's just it dirties you up. <sighs> Not dirties you up because I the way I the reason why I say that. Is because when you do ablution, you kind of clean yourself. You They're know? different. They classify different meats within different categories. Yeah. You have halal, so you have haram, haram, you have, you know, like pork is haram, for example. So that's forbidden. Yeah. Big no-no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So stay away from the forbidden technically for them or for us. Yeah, for us. <laughs> and our next uh, animal, Logan knows a lot about these guys. Yeah. Cockroaches. Why do you yeah, think I you know a lot about them? Because yeah, you I feel like you have some experience with them. Here? Everywhere. Anywhere. Considering your insect background. My insect background. I mean, you had a whole spider story. Why not a cockroach story? <laughs> I mean, I've got plenty of cockroach stories, Ooh. but like, I'm not an expert on that. Oh, okay. So, fun fact, cockroaches. Yeah. After the atomic bombs were dropped in Hiroshima and mm -hmm. Nagasaki, scientists found that cockroaches has, had survived much of the blast, but it was actually a myth. Um... This gave rise to the myth that cockroaches are the only thing that can survive nuclear war. In comparison to other insects such as the fruit fly, flower beetle, and habrobracken wasp, co cockroaches are wimps when it comes to surviving radiation. So mm. they can handle higher level amounts of radiation, but contrary to that myth, it's not actually true. Um, Insanity. Go down a bit, please. All I can picture is that scene from Wolverine. I do know they can go without... Which scene? When the bombs were dropped and he's the only one that survived him and the soldier. Oh. But he's literally a cockroach. That's crazy. Anyway. I do know they can survive a long time without their heads. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever... Have you actually seen a cockroach? Yeah, yeah I've seen one. It was like a... <laughs> It was. It wasn't even cut straight. It was just like. <laughs> it wasn't even cut. It was like straight. diagonal. Like it was weird. But I've never seen one. Yeah, like they that. just walk around and bump into the wall and stuff. Yeah, like they can't see. So, but that's um, insane to me. Is that like the? That means they don't have a brain technically. Well, the only reason the why they die yeah. is because they're not able to drink water. Without their yeah, heads. so that technically they can survive if they just had an injection of water somehow. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Because and apparently they can travel at speeds up to 90 miles an hour. Yeah. 90 on what? A car? Like, where are you getting that that information Relative from? to its 
body weight and size. Yeah, but you can't say that it travels at a speed of 90 miles an hour. That's so just what I searched up. That's bullshit. Wait, 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 that is wait, not wait. even remotely close to true. <laughs> wait, hold on. Well, just like the they example taking... of the ant. <clears throat> yeah, but that's relative to its size. The thing is, like, it would have to be traveling at 90 How miles How fast do cockroaches run? I'm looking. I got it right here. Maybe they, they meant Where'd to put something else instead of miles. I, I think they probably put body lengths, which Siri is what I'm is finding. No which is roughly equivalent, like, equivalent to, I think two to three kilometers per hour hmm. they're pretty fucking fast yeah though. they're fast don't get me wrong but they Wait, do like 50 maybe it's, it's a distance okay. no it's 50 to nine body lengths yeah like a cheetah a cheetah it's fastest speed is 75 miles per hour it's obviously not as fast as a cheetah do cheetahs go 75 100 percent max speed 75 miles per miles hour. per hour wow yeah send that bitch on the freeway oh my <laughs> god dude yeah, he's right. I thought it was like uh, 55 or 65. I didn't think it was 75. That's, that's yeah, he crazy. knows his animals, man. I can't mess with him. That's crazy. He's an animal himself. Good Lord. Yeah, we all have that experience of trying to kill some cockroaches, and it just, it just it doesn't work out. Yeah, it never does. That's a big negative. Mm -hmm. No thank you. I love Raid, though. Just spraying them down. Dude, I hate that stuff. Yeah, I hate it, but I love watching them die. It just destroys your nostrils. Because just destroyed my life for a day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Jesus. <laughs> The main reason they die is because they cannot consume water. Yeah. <laughs> if their head falls off. That's just... <clears throat> it ain't over. They're that's, freaks, dude. That's wild. Planarian worms. And now we get into the territory where it's like, what the hell are, are these animals? Are these like parasites or some shit? Potatoes and stuff. Tell like us that. about the planarian worms. Planarian they, worms. They, it looks like they got little mm. eyes. Mm. Now these little creatures are very interesting because, first of all, they can live in both fresh water and salt water. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing about them is that if you cut a planarian worm in two, the part without a head will grow a fully functional head with a new brain. The other part will grow a tail. It does all this within seven to ten days. That's crazy. That, that's like a cut healing for me. Now, this is very interesting for scientists and researchers because they're trying to understand what the mechanism behind this is. Um, and I think the idea is that they have just an overabundance of stem cells, mm -hmm. which gives them the ability to just grow back. Yeah. And by the way, any body part, this, this animal looks like a, a long, the longest potato you've ever seen <laughs> with two nostrils. It looks like it's got two little eyes. Yeah. Like two nostrils or like the, the under part of your nose. Like, it's like, you know, when you go like cross-eyed, you look at your nose. Yeah. Like this view. Yeah. <laughs> Straight <laughs> up. Straight up. The bottom of my nose, man. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so the researchers found that a fragment as small as one. How do you say that? Uh, what? what? One slash two seventy nine. Um, as small as one in two hundred and seventy nines. Okay. Or so, one or one two hundred seventy nines. Okay, that of the animal can regenerate completely within a few weeks, hmm? which is why they've been given the name immortal worm. Hmm. So hmm. it's it's just. Wait, how how long are they on average? Like oh, they're length? super small, oh. super small. Like like, do you need a microscope for it? Probably, mm, yeah. yeah. I believe that's a microscope. Yeah, it's probably image. on the on the. Uh, the and the crazy ones. the crazy thing is that it's not like it has this mechanism where it just stops after you cut it maybe like three times. Mm -hmm. You can cut it as many times as you want, and it will grow an entire new body. Based that's off crazy. of each cut. I wonder what the limit is, though. That's there is no limit. What if I just, like, stick a C4 in it and explodes and disperses? <laughs> what would happen? Well, I don't you know. know. I have no it idea. It just comes back like Deadpool? Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the reason why they can do this is through something called asexual reproduction. So they don't have to have sex in order to reproduce themselves or mm. make other copies of themselves. Hmm. It's just fascinating. They self-produce. That, that to me is mind blowing mm -hmm. because it, it shows us that everything we're used to is like, is completely, doesn't have to be the, the right way yeah. or the only way I should say. Mm -hmm. And what, what scientists are trying to do is they're trying to reverse engineer this whole process so that we can find a way to implement this within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, how yeah. crazy would it be to just grow back a hand? Yeah. And that, that's the thing. It. That's what I was going to mention. Yeah, they don't want to really veer off, but. That's crazy. If, if you can take whatever technology or science in this form 
and trans- translate it in- over into us. That's where it gets crazy. You w- there would be no paraplegics. There would be no form of we're, physical disability in yeah. the sense of like losing a limb. We're literally all Deadpool at that point. <laughs> uh, damn it, I have to wait four weeks for my legs to grow. <laughs> it's not bad. Can't do anything. That at least you get bad. new ones. Yeah, that's true. They're brand new too. Sealed. They come out with plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and then another, now this is a jellyfish, okay? I'm jelly. I'm yeah. sure you are. <clears throat> Turritopsis nutriculus. Yes. Nutriculus. That is a crazy, crazy jellyfish. Yes. It looks gnarly, bro. Yeah, it really does. It looks like it's about to flow the lava. Oh, is this the, side. um, is this called, what is this, the forever jellyfish or something like yeah, that? Yeah, this is the immortal one. Yeah, the immortal one. Thank you. Mm-hmm. The forever jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> I was like about to chil- say, that's a like cool a name. Children's book, dude. Bro, yeah. jellyfish have been around three times. Mm-hmm. The age of the first dinosaur. Wow. They're twice as old as the first bony fish. That is insane. Jesus. That's that's huge perspective. But at the same time, like, are you surprised? Because the oldest consistent thing on the planet has been the ocean. Yeah, for sure. I mean, to be fair, a long, long, long time ago, it was still radically different from what it is today. But at least the f- fundamental principles were still there. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised that the longest lasting organism, is a you know, is it's in the water. It's, it's water ad- adjacent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's water adjacent. <laughs> no, it is consumed by the water. Mm-hmm. And uh, these these little bad boys, the freaking uh, turo turret turretopsis. Wait, turretopsis nutriculus. Turretopsis nutriculus. These little bad boys. They're only around five millimeters wide so generally they're pretty tiny Mm -hmm. for the most part right and as you would expect from such a small ocean bearing creature or faring creature excuse me they are susceptible to beating to beating to being eaten (laughs) to to beating other fish (laughs) to beating other species of being alive god yeah, yeah, but they can also die from disease just like everything else essentially um or almost everything else and uh, like planarian worms, they can technically live forever. Mm. And the reason why they're called the immortal jellyfish is, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it like once they die, they fall to the sea floor and then they regrow all of the shit that they need to be alive? I think it's different because it says here that uh, they extend their lifespan in a different way compared to the uh, worm. Mm. And once once this jellyfish reaches maturity, they revert back to polyp status and begin their That's lives again. That's what it again. is. Yeah. I don't know if they actually fall to the ground. That'd be pretty crazy. No, I think they do. I think that was the they video that I've seen where they like go to the ocean floor and then that's where they restart it. And then they'll just float back up once they're ready Dude, to go. Dude, man, that sounds like a Matrix scene. And it's the equivalent yeah. of, of a 50-year-old going back to the stage where it was, he was a baby. He or she was a baby insane damn that, that's what it, literally didn't i just say matrix fresh start fresh matrix, start baby boy. bed bugs they itch and they suck next one yeah. <laughs> they live forever yeah next animal yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't honestly don't care about bed bugs. Yeah, i think bed bugs if but, you see them take your mattress out immediately if right. you see them call the cdc yeah <laughs> <laughs> but they are resilient they're able to survive a lot the of cdc and then yes. the cdc will reply with yep we see it <laughs> We see, we see your DC later. <laughs> Thanks, CDC. Next. And then my favorite childhood animal, the penguin. Really? Yes, it was. The penguin. Yeah, because okay. I don't know why. What do you mean the penguin? They are pretty bad. You mean emperor penguins? No, I just mean penguins in general were my favorite animal. Bro, you know up. how big these emperors get? So They get up like to like five feet. and a half feet. Whoa. I was going to say eight and no, a half. No, really? Four and a half to five and a half feet, I think. Really? Bro, I shit you not. They're huge. Specifically emperor penguins, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hence Emperor. Yeah. <laughs> dur, dur, dur. Other penguins are much smaller. 51 pounds, uh, 3.8 feet. Damn it. I thought I, I thought I had it. Fucked up. Man. Still pretty. pretty no, they get up. Big. They get up to, um, I mean, if you're taller, just above waist height, usually. Mm. If they're the big, big boys. <laughs> Dude, penguins would be sick, actually. Like, I just want to, like, dab one out, you know? It's good. Stop on me. You yeah, ever see not. that video of them ah! dabbing each other out? Yeah. Do you remember, sorry, speaking of penguins, do you remember that video um, or that news story? This happened quite a long time ago mm-hmm. of the two penguins that got, um, it was the two gay pe- two gay penguins that got married at the zoo. 
Have you seen that? Oh yeah, the homosexual yeah. Penguins? What? A yeah, there's years homosexual ago. penguins, and they've been together for a long time, apparently. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Very fascinating. Love is love, huh? Love is love. And emperor penguins live in some of the worst conditions on the planet. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, they literally live in a place where there's no sun for up to four months. No, that, I'm not about that. I need my vitamin. Nope. Yeah, so they can live in conditions that's like under negative 20 or something, probably. The harshest conditions. On the harshest, right. The Just cold and yeah. bitter and terrible. I, yeah. I wonder you, what they Have were you doing. seen March of the Penguins? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I remember when I watched it the first time when I was a kid, I genuinely could give less of a shit about it. I was just a, I was just like, you know, full of energy in a movie theater. My mom's like, you need to be serious. Yeah. Watch you them. Need to learn something. Watch the Yo, movie. Happy Feet was cool, though. <laughs> Happy Feet was dope. Yeah. I love Happy Feet. You know what was also a good movie? Surf's Up. Oh, <laughs> Cowabunga. Shred the Gnar. <laughs> Shred the Gnar, bro. With your boy, what was his name? Cody Stokes. <laughs> Voiced yeah, by Shia, so. Shia, Shia, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. Though. And I think these now, these next animals are probably the most hated on this list. I was yeah. going to say, I, I don't want to spoil it, but never mind. Continue. Rats. Rats. You're probably right. It's rats. either cockroaches or rats on this list. I feel like rats outweigh them. But they're v- super intelligent animals. Mm-hmm. Um, they we'll can sp- last longer without water than camels. Can fall from up to 15 meters and run away unscathed. Start a poll on Twitter. What do you hate more? Cockroaches <laughs> or rats? Let us know. Let us know, please. Um, also, widely known for being able to avoid traps uh, because they're very intelligent, like I said. Uh, they're able to learn from their past mistakes and teach, I believe they can teach younger offspring how to avoid traps and stuff. Probably. I would assume so. <laughs> Because they just send one of the younger idiots in there, watch them die, and all the other rats are like, you see that? Don't do that. Yeah, don't be that idiot. <laughs> They're like, why'd you send him in there? And he's like, because he chose to go in there. Because he's stupid. <laughs> but no, the craziest thing about rats as well is they can squeeze their bodies through ridiculously small spaces. Yeah, and isn't that due to their skeletal structure shrinking and, and expanding? I think they're able to like move their organs and skeletal structure around. Ooh. Sounds kind of intense, but it is. But I mean, it's a crazy superpower. Like you know, the bone breakers. Mm-hmm. You know, like those dancers where they bend their bones around and stuff. It's basically, it's basically what a rat nice. does, but <laughs> way more. Or sorry, the rat's version is a lot more extreme. Yeah, and on cue. Crazy. I feel like we're kind of just sprinting through the. Oh, the end. Oh, we well, only got two more. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it wasn't a long list. Oh. Ar- Arctica, Islandica, Arctica. Islandica. Ooh. Commonly this... known as the ocean quahogs. Mm-hmm. Arctica, Islandica are a type of clam that are found in the North Atlantic oh, Ocean. Who would have guessed? Hmm. <laughs> they are officially the longest living animal on Earth. The University of Wales found one clam that was 500 years old. So, wait, this goes back. I don't think it's one of. Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. No, long, yeah. Long, that, no, longest that's living? Yeah, that's correct. They they found one um, at age five oh seven. Ming the clam <laughs> <laughs> Ming. broke the Guinness yeah. World Record as the oldest animal in the world. Collected off the coast of Iceland in two thousand and six. Damn, how much initial, money? Initial initial counts of the rings uh, gave a guesstimate for the age uh, to be around four hundred and five years old, but it was still a record breaker then. But upon further analysis. They figured out it was actually 507 years old. Wow. Shit is older than this country. Twice. That's, that's <laughs> insane. Yeah. It's interesting because so, we don't usually... Dying. We don't see these as an animal. Yeah. That's why when I said clam... I mean, they are alive. Technically. So that means maybe trees are animals too? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, trees are No, not no, animals. they're not animals. <laughs> Obviously. Wait, when was the um, when, when was the um? I'm totally blanking. The Crusades. The Crusades. Uh, yeah, the 1200s. What a wild guess. No. No, he's not wrong. I mean, it was a long time. It was almost uh, almost 200 years. It was from sorry, 1095 yeah. to to 1291. There you go. I'm trying to figure out what happened in fifteen in the fifteen hundreds. Oh, you're trying are you trying to like get a relative 
understanding of when this thing yeah. was born. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what was going on in the 1500s? They had the Congo Civil War in Africa. The uh the Jing conquest American of the Ming War. in Asia. <laughs> no, that's not correct. List of wars 17 1500 1799. Mm. Anything interesting going on? <laughs> I mean, surely. I mean, that clam did live through two world wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that clam lived through two world wars. Yeah, but it had no idea either. Or did it? Like, to me, this is barely an animal, dude. But they consider it an animal. It's but a living thing. It is considered an animal. Yeah. 100%. I know, but, I like, to me, it's just... Sure. I mean, I could see why, scientifically, it could be considered that an animal. That thing might have a... a a job. It might have a 40-hour work week, bro. This is crazy. Yeah. Around the time that that clam was born, the Spanish conquistadors were taking over the Aztec Empire. Oh, my Damn. God. Good God. Damn, dude. You've seen it all, Mr. Shout clam. out to... What's his name? What's, Ming? Ming. There we go. Shout yeah. out to Ming. Shout out to the Ming. Yeah, clam. Ming. Ming, drop your, uh, drop your shout out. You know, your ats. Your, <laughs> go down your handles. Yeah. I think uh, is, we are approaching our last one. I I, yeah. I just can't get this over that. It's my favorite one. These are uh, these are these ones far. are probably the most extreme on this list, just right. in terms of what they can do. Mm. Now they are called tardigrades. Um, Explain arguably what it looks the like. most resilient animal on Earth. From what I understand, they were able. Researchers were able to find out that they are. They have the ability to survive the vacuum of space, mm -hmm. which is just unfathomable because what living creature survives fucking space. Mm -hmm. um, they're also referred to as water bears. They can survive close to minus 273 degrees centigrade, absolute zero, and can sur also survive being heated to over 150 degrees centigrade. Um, they can resist Sheesh. around a thousand times more radiation than humans can, and they can also survive six times the pressure found at the deepest parts of the ocean. Yeah. No, this thing has a head, a tail, and three pairs of legs. Um, how tiny are they? Super Very tiny. tiny. Very yeah. small. They're, you have to look up to see it under a microscope. Yeah. And... Bro, they survive they, without water for yeah, over 100 years. It's insane. <laughs> for, to whoever's not watching, this actually, it looks like... It's a water Would you say it, like a... Well, like a I don't know, like a caterpillar that has an evil face kind of thing. Is that what it looks like to you? Kind of. Right. Mixed with like a mini bear. Yeah, mixed with a mini bear. And they, they, they say that it, it resembles a bear. Well, they're called water bears. That's their nickname. Water bears, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's because of the slow stepping that they have with the whole... Their, their little arms. Yeah, the little like... arms. Like the, 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 the motion itself resembles bears. It's kind of crazy. And I think they're also found everywhere, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can just go to the nearest pond. Yeah, a lot of them are in water. Actually, in water that's not purified yet. Or yeah. things like that. <laughs> yeah. What's up? You want to hear what happened in 2019? Sure, a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot did happen in 2019. <laughs> but um, I think it was a... Oh, good Lord. I got an email. Nice. I think it was an, an Israeli space company. Yeah, Israeli lunar lander spilled a whole bunch of these tardigrades on the moon's <laughs> surface, and a bunch of them are still alive. So they can survive in the vacuum of space. <laughs> is that that's is crazy? Animal abuse? I don't know. No, of course, it's you not. Can they're microscopic. Not yeah, they're microscopic. Well, mm. the vegans have something else to say. Wait, how do they know? Yeah, they but drop plants it? also communicate with one another and technically scream when you well, damage them. PETA so, has something to say against that. Yeah, have you read about that shit? No. Yeah, and plants can communicate with one another. It's now been somewhat proven. Yeah, like to we've that. Like 90% accuracy. Plants scream. Well, they use the term scream, but they produce or omit a sound that's in a frequency spectrum that we can't hear. Hmm. It's outside of a human's ability to hear. So we listen roughly between uh, 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz, right? Yeah. And these plants scream somewhere, I think it was in the um, the 34,000 to 45,000 uh, hertz spectrum, mm -hmm. or 34 kilohertz to 45 kilohertz. Just think about that next time you eat kale. So there's now a theory that humans evolved to hear in the auditory spectrum that we do 
So we purposefully wouldn't hear plants screaming 24 hours a oh, day. Oh, it would be outrageous. Mm -hmm. yeah. We would kill ourselves. That is a new <gasps> crazy scientific theory. Can you imagine? What, is, <gasps> what does it sound like, though? What is that, Adam? I mean, most people can't even... Like, generally, most people can't even hear 20 kilohertz. Like, you can pick it up on an instrument, but you can't hear it through the instrument. That's insane. No, you can record those hertz. Like, you can record the animal, or the, sorry, the plant screaming, but you will not be able to hear it, because it's outside. At all. Of, yeah, no, so it's that's outside why, of your spectrum yeah, of hearing. That's why we look for visual waveform. Yeah. Mm, that's insane. <clears throat> so, yeah, technically, almost all plants are not just conscious, but are connected with one another mm -hmm. and they communicate. And when they get hurt, they let other plants know about it by screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot, my bad, I forgot to water my uh, palm tree. <laughs> Vegans are about to switch to ice cubes Let's only. See if we have anything else here? Uh, no, I thought that was it. I'm pretty sure you covered it. Yeah, I think I by think, far yeah. tardigrades are- I mean, they're, it, dude, I mean, if they can survive with a vacuum of space, my guy. <laughs> And do just guy. fine too, like with no problem. My guy, they vacuum go, of space. They go a hundred years without water. That's also, okay, how, bro. Who like, know? How did they figure that out? Like, have they been studying these things for a hundred years? How and they, they just put one in a container and they're like, leave it alone yeah. for a hundred. Or maybe years they cut we'll one open and it. then they found out that it looks like SpongeBob's uh, father, just very dry <laughs> in age. Listen, if they can take a picture of a fucking black hole, they can do this. Dude, they can take a picture of a black hole, but they cannot accurately tell you which way the wind's going to blow in half an hour. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you guys learned something from our... Uh, I sure did. Top 10 most resilient animal mm -hmm. episode. The best. The best in I the think game. I think it's very valuable to look into nature and to learn certain things, even to just to observe. Um, yeah, I There's agree. a lot of beauty in it. There's a lot. There's a lot to look at. I agree. And you can find a lot of similarities between like how you think or how you perceive things and mm -hmm. translate it into other parts, you know, and yeah, it can, it doesn't even have to be with humans. You can translate it maybe into other forms of science or yeah, things like that. Because at the end of the day, it's all pattern recognition. That's how you find these things out. You know, we, didn't, after we all... didn't sit down with a tardigrad and just ask him, <laughs> yo, you drink water? And he's like, nope, I haven't had a cup in a hundred years. Dude, this is the gnarliest thing I've ever what? I've ever read an animal doing. So, cryptobiosis puts tardigrades into a ton or toon, T U N state, mm -hmm. slowing their metabolism to a halt, reducing their need for oxygen, and ridding their cells of water almost completely. Yeah. In this shrunken state, tardigrades mimic death so closely that they're able to survive in places devoid of water and all the other stuff that we mentioned. So they're like, they're in a mummified state. And then the moment they get exposed to water again, they just reanimate themselves in a matter of hours. Wow. That's wild. So they literally store themselves as a, kind of as a dry zombie. Yeah. Until like, they just meet water again. Yeah, think, think of a cocoon kind of thing. That's if so great. Also, if you played uh, Pokemon Stadium, there's one of the mini games where you have to uh, bash uh, there's like three tardigrad looking thingies hmm. and what they do is that every time you're about to smash them They form a ton and it's made out of like titanium or something. No shit. I swear to God huh. Huh. And That's why when he said tardigrad I looked into that heavy because I was just like yeah, whoa Yo, this reminds me of my childhood but Yeah. With Told that you. you can send us out. All right. Thank you again for joining us. You know where to find us We are on YouTube at the 2 a.m. Podcast. We also have a clips channel called the 2am clips oh, yeah. you can find us on instagram tiktok and all forms of social media uh, we are on apple Podcasts, spotify anchor.fm lipson and much much more we're hitting all the major platforms now so that's great uh, yeah stay tuned we'll see you next time and peace Love you.